Hello, welcome to my video. Today I'll be showing you how to aggregate an RSS feed to your timeline automatically so that when a YouTuber, a podcaster, your favorite blogger publishes new content, that content will appear in your timeline so both you and your Twitter followers can see it. It's a good technique. It means that you don't have to go to people's blogs or channels or whatever to keep checking to see if they've updated. It can all just go straight to your Twitter timeline. And if it was if it's content that you believe in and that you trust, the chances are you would have tweeted that anyway to your Twitter timeline, but you don't have to do that. So it's it all ends up in one place. So we'll be using a couple of free tools and those tools are Snipply and Twitter feed I've got a hand-drawn diagram here explaining what we'll be doing so it's four stages basically it begins with the RSS feed we route that RSS feed through Snipply then we route that through Twitter feed and that's where we can put hashtags and things on it and finally it ends up on the Twitter timeline. So let's begin by looking at what you can expect to see as the end result. So here's Seth Godin's latest blog post. He published this approximately nine hours ago. I would have been asleep then. I would have been in bed. <laughs> so um, that, that was automatically tweeted for me and it looks like somebody did retweet it. So this is what you can expect to see. So you've got the content, the blog entry by Seth Godin. And at the bottom here, I've got this floating advert for my Twitter account. And it actually says, follow me if you geek over small biz design, marketing and tech. That's a call to action, which I've added in into Snipply. And there's a button here that you can click. So every time Seth tweets this is what happens I don't have to touch any of it it's all on autopilot what I want to do today is aggregate the content of this YouTube user who's a, a very good graphic designer I really like his videos I share them a lot with friends and colleagues and associates I would like to start tweeting his stuff out to my Twitter timeline automatically we need to find this guy's user ID. We need his user ID, which is like lots of numbers and characters, like a string of characters. In order to find the user ID, we go to subscriptions on the left and we click the name of the YouTube channel. Okay, so at the top here in the URL bar, you can see it says www.youtube.com slash channel slash, and then that is the user ID. Highlight that, copy it, paste it to your notepad. We'll be needing that in a sec. Next, we need to actually build the YouTube RSS feed. Highlight the user ID we copied from the YouTube URL, cut that, and see here where it says user ID highlight that right click and go paste and I'll include this link in the video description the link here is what we need so you can copy that next we need to go to Snipply Snipple is free if you're signed into Twitter already you can go to Snipply which is S n i p dot l y or just google snipply and you can sign in with twitter what you need to do is go to account and profiles and we need to add a new profile okay i'm going to say small biz geek you can use your own name or your brand name whatever you want maybe you're a small business you might want to use your business name then go twitter.com forward slash followed by your twitter username for me it's small biz geek uk add a picture by clicking change photo upload a photo make sure that it's got a square aspect ratio otherwise it gets stretched in quite a horrible 
fashion so make sure it's square it will resize it for you automatically the advanced options you can ignore because they're for paid users so that doesn't concern us because we're using the free version of Snipply so add profile now let me just quickly go back to this uh, example that I made earlier you see this call to action you can pick anything you want in order to set up the call to action we need to go back to Snipply and we need to create a snip Pick a page URL. Any it doesn't matter because we won't be we won't be tweeting this. We're just doing this for the purposes of setting up a new call to action. It will become apparent in a minute while we're doing this. So www.smallbizgeek.co.uk and then enter a message. Bearing in mind I'm tweeting out graphic design videos, um, so I want to pick a call to action which is which is appropriate. For Seth Godin, I say follow me if you geek over small biz design, marketing, and tech. For this guy, um, I might say something a bit different. So, um, do you love graphic design? Connect with me and let's chat. Okay. For the button URL, anything you want. But because I'm promoting my Twitter, I'm just going to keep it as Twitter. Small biz geek. When you click the button, it will go to small biz geek on Twitter. If you click my profile picture there, that will also go to small biz geek on Twitter. So I'm funneling people back to my Twitter. If you wanted, you could promote. Uh, a web page or some external page of yours, squeeze page, landing page, whatever. Um, when people click where it says button, that is what you call a conversion. I have had some conversions. Anyway, we can create that and now we can just shut that down. Just shut it down. We don't need to tweet that. We're not going to be tweeting this out. We've done that because now that call to action that we just created has been saved and what I want to do now is go to integrations and RSS feeds grab that YouTube RSS feed create a new feed by pasting it in clicking next and there it is that is the call to action I just created a few minutes ago so that's been saved into a list I can pick any one of the call to actions that I've used on previous links that I've created. Anyway, so I'm going to select that one. And that has now created a new call to action which is overlaid over that RSS feed. So anytime anytime this guy uploads a new video, I can expect to see the same call to action every single time overlaid. If we click that yeah, we can ignore the fact that it's trying to tweet out the small biz geek page. Just ignore that. We're interested in this. What we want is this link, which we'll highlight and copy, and we can stick that there. Okay, for safekeeping. Now, Twitter feed. Twitter feed is free. Sign up, get a new account, and you can see I've already got a few feeds that are being tweeted out automatically so I've got various Twitter accounts that I control and manage and I've been able to automatically um, aggregate content from a website to the Twitter feed so we'll go create new feed and we'll call this graphic designer tips then we'll Paste in the feed, give it a little test, doesn't matter about that. Go advanced settings, I don't know how often this guy updates, I think it's probably once a week. So I could set the Twitter feed to check, well, it's every couple of days, so I could set the Twitter feed to check, let's say every 24 hours. 
I don't think he posts more than one video in a 24 hour period leave it yeah one update title and description I'm, I'm going to say title only because the description is not going to fit and it will get truncated shorten link leave that as bitly scroll down post prefix I'm going to say graphic designer tips Bear in mind you've only got 140 characters in a tweet, so it's got to fit. You've got to fit in the prefix, the title of um, the content. These titles look like they're about 70 to 80 characters each time. So graphic designer tips, colon. Can you put a colon in there? I've used up my maximum allowance. Uh, graphic design tips there we go I'm actually going to um, put a hashtag in there graphic design so anybody that searches Twitter for graphic design will find some of my tweets of his content of course he'll get you know views on his video I could get a few new followers out of that 20 characters max 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. I've only got six characters left. I was going to say the other thing I could do is um, if I find out what his Twitter handle is, I could always go um, via at, and then I think it's graphic design, whatever his handle is. And if I did that, he would get a notification every time he, uh, you know, that tweet appears in my timeline, thus alerting him to the fact that I'm tweeting his stuff and he might retweet that which means I get a retweet to his audience but anyway for now I'll just leave it as graphic design so anybody searching for that hashtag within Twitter could end up finding my uh, Twitter account so continue to step two okay so the feed was successfully created okay that's great so you want to make sure that you connect to service, okay? So I'm going to click Twitter. And I've already got various Twitter accounts connected. And um, if you want to authenticate a new Twitter account, you just click Authenticate Twitter and uh, it will connect your Twitter account to Twitter feed. So you can leave those as is they're just the UTM tags in the analytics string click create service when you're happy with everything and that is now aggregated to my Twitter account so in the next couple of days when that guy posts uh, a new video that will appear in my Twitter account click all done in a couple of days time I'll show you how it went and what the results were in my Twitter timeline. Hello, so here's one of the tweets that has been aggregated from the graphic design channel that we uh, that we set up to automatically post to my Twitter feed. So that's the link, it's a snipply link and of course there's the graphic design hashtag that we added in Twitter feed, that's the suffix and that's the prefix graphic design tips that we also set up in Twitter feed. So let's click the link and see how it handles YouTube videos. Oh this is interesting. It seems to be uh, embedding the video so it's not your typical YouTube page but uh, I see what it's done there. Yeah I mean that's that's okay. I mean, you can press play, you can watch the video. If you want to visit the original video you can click that link there. I would have preferred it if it had posted it's usually youtube.com forward slash watch and then the video ID. Yeah it's okay so just check that it works. If I click the cross hey <laughs> they're immediately on my uh, that's good so let me do that again let me just show you what's happening there. So if I click that it opens his video 
and I've got my little advert at the bottom so if they click the button they go to my Twitter account if they click my avatar they go to my Twitter account but if they watch the video and then close it down it still sends them to my Twitter account that's good so it's pretty good what you can do I mean you can aggregate podcasts as well and you can aggregate written content in the traditional sense you know you can get pretty creative with RSS feeds I don't know if you've heard of Yahoo pipes but you can do some pretty cool stuff over there as well so let me know what you think and please um, comment on the video share any ideas that you might have for taking this a bit further thanks for watching anyway speak to you again soon bye